Tom, we made it here after a long drive, so a long way from us up north here in Burnley. Uh, we're at BCW Manufacturing. Um, standing here in front of two MX850 uh, machines from Matsura, I'm here to find out, Tom, what you're actually doing on these machines. Could you maybe start with that? Yeah, uh, we're uh, machining five axis components on the uh, MX850s. We do uh, basic drilling, tapping, milling, um, different processes. And it's all aluminium castings? Yeah, that's right, yeah. I'd like to uh, probably ask you firstly about the work holding here as well, because if you're going from these sort of irregular shape castings, different styles, how do you how do, how do you cope with that? Uh, well, we have an on-site team that actually design and develop the uh, work holding, so that can be manual fixtures or hydraulic fixtures. Um, that's all designed and manufactured internally. And with doing this type of machining on these castings, uh, I, don't, I don't think it'd be wrong of me to say it's not a very complicated machining process, is it? But what are the, the factors involved in when you're making and machining castings like this? What do you have to consider on the machine? Well, it's all down to the machine envelope. It's about what the process uh, needs from us. So that may be different tooling, as you say, work holding. So we take all that into consideration when we choose the machine. And obviously when we spec the piece of kit for what, what we're looking for. Uh, I'm standing here and we've got these, these two MX850s behind you. But behind me, there's another MX850 and also a man from Matsura. They were purchased before these two, I believe. Yeah, that's right. So we've already got Matsura's in the business. And obviously with that partnership that we'd already kicked off, you know, the, the choice for these machines fitted A, what we wanted, but also the service that we got from them obviously pointed us in that direction. Is this a production runner? And if so, having the two machines, would I be right in saying it might be quite nice to have a robot in the middle uh, loading one <laughs> and then the other? Yeah, yeah, you're right there. They are production uh, machines. Um, with, with the uh, robotics in mind, we, we do actually have in the future the plan for this to be robotized. So uh, an OP10 and an OP20 operation on here um, set out already for that. Um, so yeah, you're right on that one. <laughs> okay, and I, I, I said about the four machines, the Matsura machines, but I've got to say, your factory here, I mean, you had 30,000 square foot of machine shop. It's then gone up to 100 and it's now going up to 180. There's a lot of machine tools in here and a lot of those suppliers could offer you a similar size of machine. So why did you choose the 850s from Matsura, the MX? Well, the, the Matsura is really, it's down to the service. It's down to the, the work that we've been able to do with Matsura based on, you know, we've looked at our work holding earlier. You know, it's all about the, the working with the machine tool supplier to actually get what we need from, from them. And with the, the machine, the man behind us then, that, that's, that is more of a, that has a fully integrated uh, pallet system into it, doesn't it? Is that a different style of work you're doing on that machine? Uh, no, same type of work, um, it's just different volumes. So really, as you've touched on before, this will be an up 10 and up 20 per process going forward. Uh, on those machines, it's more individual work holding for different jobs. So it's obviously palletized, as you say, but it's all production runner, so it's, it's the same type of work. With every machine tool purchase, you, you, you have additions to the machine, accessories. One on here, uh, specifically, is the Renishaw probing. Can you tell us how you're getting the benefit from that and what you're using it for? Yeah, so the Renishaw probing that we've decided to use on this machine allows us to uh, produce a precision component of basically a, a, a non-precision casting, shall we say. So any issues that we get with the machine, we're actually probing the part, bringing it into a, a best fit scenario, shall we say, so that we get the best from the, uh, the raw product that we're getting. Uh, how do you also handle, I, I did hear uh, a little earlier that, that almost like um, that cut, that light cut of casting when it happens and you almost feel like there's a little bit of chatter there, that can have an effect on the spindle, the tool life, how do you manage that machining? Um, well, a lot of that's down to the work holding. So with us now designing and manufacturing the work holding in-house, that allows us to then look at those scenarios, look at the tooling selection, uh, and, and design around that with the work holding. And when that happens, though, do you not worry about spindle wear as it's kind of deflecting? Um, no, I mean, on the Matsuras themselves, we've got extremely good reliability. I mean, the machines you've touched on before, we've had no issues with those machines in, in any of those scenarios, and it's similar work holding we've been using on there. So we're confident in the product that we put in place. And when you have work holding like this and you talk about automation, um, how do you go about, uh, I mean, you can't manually be clamping those, those castings on there. How does all that work? Uh, well, it's all through, uh, through table hydraulics. So we're working in conjunction with other suppliers, people at FSC. Um, it's all, all through table hydraulics. So the work holding's designed with them in mind. So we work with them for, you know, not just their actual uh, systems behind the machine, but also the clamping itself. 
It's quite uh, poignant, actually, because the, the auto doors just opened as well, which you won't have seen. Uh, would, that was obviously something you opted for, and again, that, that starts to lend itself towards your, your more production orientated machining. Yeah, that's right. So obviously, we touched on before, it's all about the automation that we, were, we are going to be putting in place. But it does also add to the fact that, you know, if you've got an operator that's working on the machine, how do we reduce the tack time? How do we make it as efficient as possible? So things such as those type of add-ons are things that we, we do look at. And loading a machine, again, nice to see the doors open there. When that table is tipped forward, I, I love the way you can get into those machines. They're so hands-on, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. The, very accessible. I mean, as you can see, we've also got a piece of equipment for the crane in the fixtures in there. So all those type of things taken into consideration for accessibility in and around the machine as well. And as machines get bigger, often they get slower. But what, is that the case with Matsura as well? Or does it still maintain uh, you know, that, that, that high-speed uh, capability? No, no, uh, quite the opposite really with the Matsura, as we found with similar, similar machine tools that you know, we can transfer a pro from a previous machine tool onto the Matsura and we actually improve on the cycle time. So I think the size of the machine isn't an issue because um, obviously Matsura are concentrated on you know, machine, uh, the actual machining speed of these. Uh, you're a tier one supplier into, into many industries, the automotive specifically. Uh, a few years ago, these machines, or maybe a decade ago, Matsura machines weren't often seen in in maybe subcontract businesses, but that's very different these days, isn't it? They've become very, very affordable. Why do you feel? Why do you think that is? Uh, well, it's got to be down to the cost of ownership. You know, it's the reliability of the machine. You know, you're not you're bringing in a piece of equipment that you're not expecting to make changes to or having to repair frequently. So it's all it's all based around the reliability. I've got to probably put it to that. And didn't one of your uh, customers uh, come in to this machine shop with a big smile when they saw these machines here? Wasn't it kind of like? Uh, almost rubber stamp the order they were going to give you, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you get customers, you get uh, employees that you know look to join the business, and it, 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 it certainly gives people a confidence level that you, you're using piece of kit that they can rely on as well as you can. What did they actually say to you, that customer? I'm intrigued. I'd, I'd like our viewers to hear that. <laughs> well, it was put it, put it this way: it was a case of. Right, well, we've seen enough. We can we, we can head back upstairs now. So yeah, it filled them with comp confidence. Yeah, it's yeah, fair to say. Certainly did. Certainly did. And Matsu are very proud of their offerings when it comes to turnkey packages as well and solutions, their engineering expertise. Uh, was that how this machine was delivered, Tom? Uh, no, not in this instance. This is something that we've actually worked with them on. Uh, so, as I said before, we don't always require a turnkey package with our ability internally. Um, but from a, a delivery perspective, it was pretty much flawless, is what I could say, is delivery on time, expecting, getting what you're expecting. So, yeah, can't, can't fault it.